I'm about ready to digitize the forget-me-not block for Lori Holt's Calico Garden. I'm going to do this one just a little bit differently than I have been doing the others. That's because it's got so many pieces in to make it symmetrical. Uh, I'm going to do this just a little bit different. I am in Embrilliance and I'm going to come up here to the Create. You can see this icon if you have Stitch Artist. If you have Stitch Artist 2, you will see the Vector button right here. I found out if you have Stitch Artist 1 and you don't have 2 yet, you can purchase an upgrade versus having to completely purchase all of Stitch Artist 2 and pay full price for it. I'll link to that below this video. So I'm going to click on the Vector button. And I am looking for the forget-me-not block pieces that I just made in the scan and cut. I'm sorry, that I just made in the Brother Canvas. And I'm going to open it. The first thing I want to do is to get rid of the hoop because this flower block is taller than the 10 by 16 hoop on the Brother Luminaire. I'm going to just get rid of it for now by going up to the View menu and un check draw hoop and that's going to leave things a little bit cleaner for me now what i'm going to do is only keep one each of each one of the pieces that i need and build them together and then copy and paste them and the way i'm going to do this is eventually we are going to have three different design pages and then I will delete the parts that I don't need and create a printout for placement. If Just kind of bear with me and, and I'll explain how this is going to go. So I need one flower and I'm just going to click on it and kind of grab, grab it and pull it off to the side. I do need the pot handle and the inside of the pot handle. Need that. I need the pot. And I need, we'll keep, we'll, we'll keep two leaves just because it'll make life easier, I guess, since I need two to create what I'm doing here. And I do need the center stem. And I need a flower center. And I need these little stems. I just need one of those. So the rest of these, let me get out of Stitch Artist, and I'm going to click on the Select Objects uh, icon right up here, and I'm going to highlight all of these, and I'm going to hit Delete on the keyboard. So let me get my stem now. Click on that, and I want to center that in the hoop when I eventually get it hooped. So that's where I know where to begin. Now, this block is 16 inches tall. So I have scrolled out on my mouse. You can roll the mouse um, button and it'll scroll like that. So I need to create some guidelines to give me a 16 inch tall workspace. So I know not to go any taller than that. I'm going to grab one of the, don't, don't get it in the airspace here. Grab one of the little lines and you can get a guideline. I'm going to drag it down to eight and let go. And I'm going to get another one, and I'm going to drag it to 8 right here. So this tells me exactly how tall to make the flower. I'm going to grab the pot, and I want to bring it down here. I want it. It's not straight. I mean, it's roll in a little bit. I'm going to straighten it out, and then I'm going to put it right down here. So now I know that's the bottom of the pot. I want to build the flower now, and it needs to rotate so that it is straight up like this. And I'm going to put the center into it. What I'm going to do is highlight the center, hold down the control key, highlight the flower petals. And up here in the alignment button, it says align and distribute. I want center and center and apply. There. Now I know that that's correct. I'm going to click close. Now I am going to just take this guy, right click and copy, and right click and paste. So here is a second flower. 
Let me grab this first inside control and hold that. So now I have both of those. This first flower is going to go right here at the top. And I want to make sure that these handles are centered on the line. I'm going to hold the control key down and use my arrow key just to nudge it a tiny, tiny bit. So now I know that this is the top and this is the bottom. So I can see exactly how tall this is going to be right here. I probably need to grab the stem and I'm going to arrow key it up just a little bit to put the top of the stem under the flower and the bottom of the stem is now under the pot. I need these leaves right here and I'm going to turn this one and the way they are situated is that they are approximately a quarter of an inch away from each other right here. And then this one, I'm going to bring it over. I want it angled the same. So I'm going to set it on top of the other one and get it just like I like it. There, that looks pretty good. I'm going to come over here to the mirror, flip and mirror, flip horizontally. And then I'm going to move it over. I'm going to zoom in really close and take a look and make sure that these guys, they're the same height. I can grab another guideline and bring it down. The idea is to only be doing this one time for these two leaves. I'm going to highlight the leaves. I want, I like to stitch the left one first. We can get into stitch order later. Left leaf, hold down control, right leaf. And these look really good. Right click and copy. Right click and paste. Move them away and right click and paste. So there are my six leaves already angled exactly like they need to be on the stem. Now this guy right here, I need to right click and copy, right click, paste, and me. It's, it's right on top of the other one. I'm just going to use my arrow key to move it over. Okay, and then I want to mirror that. Great. All right, so let's flip these around so that they are going to make the stems. I need this flower and the circle, and I want to move these just like this so that we have about a quarter of an inch of space right here. No, I don't need to do this one right now. I'm going to delete that. Okay, so I just want this one flower. And that looks really good. I could take the stem and arrow key it down just a little bit. Yeah, and then move the flower in with the circle. Just get it right about there. That looks good. So I have the center, the flower, and the stem highlighted. Right click, copy, right click, paste, mirror, flip horizontally, and grab it and bring it over. That looks good. All right. Do you see what I did there? I've just used one to move things around. Okay. So let me grab these two guys here and put them where they need to go. Let's do a right click and paste again. And give me this. Right click, paste. Flip horizontally. Grab it. Put it right there. Get this one and this one. Put these like right about there. And now I can see that I can move things around a little bit more. I can give myself just a little bit more. Oops, see what I did? Control Z does an undo. So now what I need to do is figure out what's what and get these reordered so then I can move them around and I know that they're going to order correctly. But in just a matter of minutes, I, I was able to go ahead and build this. So I'm going to start moving these things around in a stitch order that works. As I do this, I'm going to grab a picture, not the word, but a picture. And on the picture, you can move it around and hover it over the one you want it to be after. So that's what I'm going to do right now. The very first thing that needs to go down are these side stems. 
and I'm going to click this one. There it is. Right click, move first, and then this one, this one, you have to right click over on the word, right click, and I'm going to tell it move first. If I tell it move earlier, it'll move up one. I'm going to tell it move first. All right. Personal preference. I want to stitch left to right on both of these on, on the whole design. So now I'm going to grab this one on the picture and hover it over the one I want it to be after and they switch places. Now I need to stitch this one. It's all the way down on 21. I'm going to right click, move first, and then I'm going to grab it and I'm going to make it number three. And then I'm going to hover over this one. Right click, move first, and I'm going to make it number four. All right, so in the stitch order now, we've got left, right, left, right. Very good. Now I need my stem. That's number five. That's great. And let's do the leaves now. Here's this one. I'm going to grab it on the picture and hover it over the one I want it to be after. All right. And then this one, bring it up. There we go. I'm going to continue to do this. Now I need to get the hot handle set the way I want. So I'm going to click on the outer one and I want the center handle, that black center handle exactly on that line. I'm going to move it with my arrow keys and I'm going to do the same thing with the middle one and just move it with the arrow key until it is exactly centered. That does a pretty good job of getting that pop handle to be the way I want it. I'm going to grab both of these and I'm going to move them behind the pot about a quarter of an inch down. And maybe I'm going to rotate it just a tiny bit to get it like I like it. And then I'm going to move it with the arrow keys until those center handles are centered on the pot. That looks really good. All right. So after I have my leaves done, I want the outer handle to go down after the leaf. I want the inner handle to go down and then I want the pot and that's correct there. And now it's time to build the flowers. We have flower, center, flower, center, flower, center, flower, center, flower, center. All right, so everything is in the correct stitch order now. I'm going to do something a little bit different once we get this all changed around. I'm actually going to do all the flowers at one time and then all the centers at one time. I want to be able to minimize how many times I have to pull the hoop in order to get this thing done. Okay, now that I have this thing all set exactly the way I want, I am going to convert it to applique with uh, control A to select all. And I'm going to come back over here to the stitch artist button and I'm just going to click the blanket stitch. All right, it has turned everything into applique over here now. It went from line to applique. I'm going to rename these now. Let me scroll up here. I'm going to click off and I'm just going to click on each one. And you can see right here in the properties, it's a little bit larger than I want. Let me scroll in. See how on these tiny little quarter inch strips, those are very tightly stitched together. I'm going to highlight it and right click and 1.5 and stitch width, I will do a 2.0 and enter. And look how nice and tiny that is now. See, that looks much better. And then I'll double click on this and I'm gonna call it uh, stem one. And I'm gonna continue to do that for the rest of them.
Okay, now I have everything renamed. Uh, I've got it in the right stitch order. And now what I need to do is to create different stitch outs so that everything will fit together in the different hoopings. Right now I'm going to Control A to select all, right click and copy. I'm going to come up here to the new icon and right click and paste and new one more new and right click and paste so this one right here this is the master matter of fact i'm going to do another one and right click and paste okay so this is going to be the master full embroidery file so i'm going to save this uh, file save stitch file as and i'm going to save it in the pes Calico Garden folder. Uh, you can save it to your embroidery format. And this one, this is going to be Forget Me Not Master. Oh, let me go File, Stitch and Working. There we go. See, now it gives me Forget Me Not Master up on the tab. So let me do this on this one. Now, this particular hooping, I'm only going to stitch the stems and the, the side stems and the center stem. So all of this, I'm going to highlight this one, scroll down, hold down my shift key, highlight that one. The shift key selects the top one, the bottom one, and everything in between. And I'm going to hit delete. There. That is my center hooping. If you have a hoop that is not large enough to do this 11 and a half inch piece right here, then you could stitch these down by themselves in the embroidery machine if you want. And then you would have to stitch this one with your domestic sewing machine. You might want to do the center stem and the sides on the domestic all at once so that they've got the same thread, same spacing, and all that kind of stuff. It'll probably make it a lot better. I'm going to File, Save, Stitch, and Working, and this is going to be the Forget Me Not Dash Stems. Okay, so this is retitled up here, and then this one let me click off. I want to remove all of the stems because that's on the other hooping. Delete. Okay. And then I want to remove, I think I'm just going to remove the pot. I can do the pot and everything, that in a final hooping. The reason I'm doing just the pot is because on these, I'm going to re reorder the stitch out in the PES file. I'm going to reorder this so that it stitches placement line, placement line, placement line, placement line, placement line, placement line. Iron all the leaves down at one time and then blanket, 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 like that. I, that's That way I don't have to remove the hoop each time. So I'm just going to remove the pot right now. I'm going to hit delete. So now I have leaves and flowers. So I'm going to file, save stitch file as forget me not dash leaves flowers. Okay, so there's my other hooping and my final hooping. Click off. I'm going to get rid of everything except the pot and the handle. Hold on my shift key and delete and grab this and delete okay oh i forgot to do something on the other one you want uh this is highlighted i want to center in the hoop there we go now i am going to print this because i want the crosshairs on the printout first let me save it file save as and this is going to be forget me not dash hot and i want to file print I don't need both pages. The second page has the uh, colors. Oops, one to one. And I'm going to tell it okay. So that's going to give me my printout with the crosshairs. Let me go back to my leaves and flowers. Uh, control A and center in the hoop. There we go. That's right. And then file and save. So now it's centered in the hoop and file and print. One to one and my stems.
I don't need to print this. This is already in the hoop and this is my first hooping. I'm centered in the hoop. The reason I print it is because I've got to align those flowers and that pot on this first hooping. All right, so now let's go back to the leaves and the flowers. Or actually, I'm going to go to stems. I'm going to save this, save stitch file. Forget me not stems, save overwrite. Yes. I'm going to close these. So let's open a new tab now. I'm going to come in here and I want my PES file for the stems. Now look what you have. If you close the file and then reopen it, now we have where there is a, they are split out. Before they were all in one. <clears throat> you couldn't separate them. One was the placement line and then the tack down in one. If you close the tab and then reopen it, now I can move these around. So I'm going to reorder these so that the Placement lines happen one after another. It's going to do all of the placement lines. Then I'll pull the hoop, iron everything down, and then it will stitch the final blanket stitch. File and save. Stitch file as. And I'm going to go to, forget me not, stems, PES, and save. Do I want to replace it? Yes. So now I know it's going to stitch in the right order. So let's uh, open a new tab. And open this up. I need forget me not leaves and flowers, the PES. Drag that in. Okay. Again, now everything is separated. All right, so we have placement, 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 blanket, 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 blanket. There we go. Blanket, blanket. So I only have to pull the hoop one time to iron all those leaves down. Do the same thing with the flowers. You can go through and rename these if you want. I don't want. So uh, this is the way that you reorder everything so that now you only have to pull the hoop three times to iron it on versus after every single applique position stitch. So if you have a smaller hoop and you cannot fit this, so this design is eight and five eighths by 12 and a quarter. If you don't have a hoop large enough to do this, you would have to uh, segment these out. You might put the leaves, these two bottom leaves, with the pot instead. So there's a lot of different ways you can do this. You just have to do the printout so that it will all fit in your hoop. I'm going to File, Save, Stitch, File, As, and I want to write over this and tell it Save. You want to replace it? Yes. Okay, good. So we're going to hit new again, and I'm going to bring in the pot. This is pretty easy to do. Look how it's removed the underlying stitches. That's why you don't have to worry about that. Now, you, you cannot remove underlying stitches with BES or simply applique. All right, now that I have this all in the right stitch order with the applique position stitches first and then the blanket stitches last. I am ready to go sew all of these out. You need to transfer the designs to your embroidery machine. If you have a brother or baby lock wireless machine, you can come up here to utility and scroll down to Solaris, send to Solaris XP1. The XP1 is the Luminaire and it also works on the XP2 and XP3 and it'll ask you for a design name. Now you're going to only send them one at a time and you need to have your machine already turned on 
and have had it go through its initial sequencing where you press OK and the arm moves back and forth, or in the case of the multi-needle, the head moves back and forth and it's ready to embroider. So I am going to send this over to my multi-needle. I'm going to click OK and it's going to throw an error message. It says error sending file, please try again. However, it is over there at the machine. If you have a Solaris or a Luminaire, it will say success, file has been sent. I'm going to tell it OK. If you do not have a wireless machine, the easiest way to transfer all of these at the same time is to put a USB stick into your laptop and come down to your file folder. This is for a Windows machine and you can see I've got a USB drive in the machine right now in the computer and I am going to open up the folder where my embroidery files are. The ones, not the embroidery working, but the embroidery file itself. I'm going to click on one, hold down my control key and click on the next ones. Easy way to do this, you can click up here on this column heading date modified and that way you'll know you always have the most recent version if you have lots of different versions of them. I'm going to scroll down here and if you cannot see this quick access panel right here, you can come over to view and it'll go show and make sure navigation pane is checked and then you'll be able to see that. And so I'm just going to click on, oops, go back. You've got a back arrow up here. You can click back. I'm going to highlight them again. Okay. And I'm just going to scroll down and drag them and it'll say copy to USB and you can let go. And then the easiest thing to do is just right click and eject. And that will make sure that all the files close out and finish uh, their copying before you pull the USB stick out of the computer. And that's it. All right, I am ready to go stitch this out.